Okay, so if there's uh, uh, no questions, I'll continue to the uh, rest of the lecture. So we have shown that potentially uh, the tests are really important, especially the tag boundaries, right? So what are enriched tag boundaries? So in this case, uh, this is actually a uh, enrichment analysis we performed uh, back in the Nature 2012 paper. These are the history modifications you might be familiar with in your previous lecture. So again, we see this strong enrichment for H3K4 trimethation, which is active promoter mark. We also see uh, the enrichment of the TSS and then the enrichment for GROW-seq, which stands for active transcription, right? Another uh, uh, interesting uh, element that we see is this guy, the sign element, which is a repetitive element. Right? I remember, uh, if I remember correctly, my good friend, Ting Wang, also gave a lecture uh, in this class, right? So he's expert on the repetitive elements. It seems actually potentially retrotransposons also a, a play a critical role uh, in the formation of 3D genome structure uh, as well. So besides this uh, transcription and the sign element, we observe the enrichment of this, this guy called CTCF. Right? So CTCF is an important protein, right? Initially it was discovered like 20, 30 years ago. Initially it was discovered as a uh, repressor. <laughs> actually later on people began to show uh, CDCF can potentially act, act as a, a enhancer. Hold on one second. There's a finally I see a question. Is that a question? You can leave the question to the end of your this recording. Does that work or? Uh, yeah, I think there's a simple question we can address. Yeah, so the question here is uh, now all the tests are pretty close to each other. So whether potentially there's maybe a you know, gap between the two adjacent tasks? I think the answer is yes, uh, because in, in, in all the uh, previous paper, we usually see how much the genome is covered by tasks. Usually it's between 80 to 90%, right? So potentially a lot, lot of the genome, they are just not organized in those hairball-like structures. So tasks, they don't necessarily located immediately to next to each other, right? Hope that I address your question. All right. Again, so back then we discovered that the CDC binding is strongly enriched at TAD boundary. So, so this is TAD boundary. And then this paper actually is uh, uh, from uh, our paper last year. Uh, that paper is about, is about the, the uh, genome annotation and the high C data in zebrafish. Right? So we can see even in zebrafish, CDC binding says they are still enriched at TAD boundary regions. And a similar, a similar observations have been made in human, mouse, and zebrafish, and quite a few other species. So it seems that the uh, CDCF could play a critical role in the TAD formation, right? So how did it happen? So this is a, a, a really a more accepted uh, concept right now. It is, has been pro proposed that loop exclusion has been really the foundation for the formation of TADs, right? So previously we showed that the CDCF uh, is enriched at the tad boundary. So each of these arrow is a CDCF because we are talking about the proteins, they bind in their motifs. So motifs have their uh, directions, right? Either downstream or upstream. Right? And then in this case, what the people have shown actually is the, uh, uh, co the uh, coordination between CDCF and uh, another complex, which is called a cohesion ring, uh, work together to form the TAS. Right. So this is a cohesion, cohesion ring. You can see it has a SMC1, SMC3, and then right 21 right? So they can form this ring type, type of like structure. So this ring will fall on the genome from this ring. And then uh, the genome will go through the ring driven by different, uh, uh, potentially so there's a there's a uh, observation is a PAL2 uh, directed. So the genome is be propelled by uh, outside force. They, keep going through this ring like this, going through the ring. And then they began to see CTCF. So when the CTCF see the cohesion ring, it will stop. And the bad idea is that the two CTCF, they need to have a convergent motif, they can stop. If they are on the same direction or they are both go, go outside, outwards, it won't stop. So back then when I, even when myself first see this observation, I was like really surprised how is it possible? How the genome is so smart? They can only observe like genomes like this. And then in the same year, the three back-to-back-to-back uh, -to -back -to -back high profile papers, uh, Nature, Cell, they, they make the similar observation. 
And then in one of the paper, I, I believe they even using CRISPR to invert the direction of CTCF. They didn't change anything. All they did is invert the direction of CTCF binding sites. The loop can no longer form. So it's quite amazing, right? Again, to loop exclusion has been proposed to be the uh, maximum behind a, a tight formation and the two CDCF anchors, they need to be convergent, right? And as a sh actually there has been a show that over 90% of the uh, prompt loop events, actually they have converged CDCF binding sites. All right, cohesion and CTF, they're really uh, required for the formation task. So in this paper, uh, Rao ETL, so the last author is Lieberman, who is the first author for the uh, high C science paper 2009. So their group uh, uses the background system. They can quickly uh, dissolve the uh, red 21, which is a part of the uh, cohesion complex. So when they remove the uh, cohesion complex, this is a before uh, the uh, removal. You can see there's a very nice high C map. This dot is the Crompton uh, looping events. So once they removed a uh, cohesion complex, you can see the high C map is essentially, uh, I don't know if you can say destroy, you don't see those patterns at all. And then because it's Dacron system, they can be began to induce back a cohesion complex. And then they can be get see this loop is formed again. So the cohesion is really required for the formation of Crompton looping events. Okay. As the beginning, I have mentioned that uh, Ideally, you need to see everything with your own eye. Right? So if uh, in the future uh, that can be done, that's really the best. But still, right now, the genomics is really uh, the, much easier to do because you don't really see, need a lot of uh, special equipment. But uh, imaging, uh, especially uh, storm or chromosome painting, has really made a, a stride in recent years. Uh, so this paper is from Alistair from Stanford group. So in this case, they were able to label you can see this strand of DNA. They can label this strand of DNA with different colors, red, orange, and purple, right? So they use a series of uh, uh, hybridizations. And as a result, you can see your labeling uh, with a super resolution microscopy, right? Like this, right? So what they will see in their imaging, right? So they can still see this type of uh, 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 tight like structure from a uh, uh, super resolution microscopy data, right? So one thing is once they merge every the observations from uh, thousands of uh, 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 cells, they can see things like this. So one thing I'm not sure if I have time is actually when you observe TAS, these are from different cells. You can see it's the majority of the regions, they agree with each other, but potentially there are still cell to cell variations. I think that would be uh, falling to the single cell uh, analysis approaches. Okay, so the other thing is so far we talked about genomics. Right. In those high C matrix, we see, okay, 20 is, uh, means there is a stronger interaction. Uh, 100 is even better, and zero is uh, no interaction. But we really trust this data because in the end, you imagine this inside the cell, you are talking 3D genomic distance, but with the data in your hands, they are really just genomics, right? Do we trust the genomics data? So the image of that actually from this paper really, really give us confidence moving on. So again, in this figure, the y-axis is high C number of reads, right? From zero, from, from zero to, to uh, 1,000, right? The high C read intensity. The x is a spatial distance uh, observed from the, uh, the um, super resolution microscopy. So you can see they all, may almost have this um, perfect anti-correlation, which is great, right? It means the bigger the number in the, the high C data matrix, the smaller space, spatial space, uh, inside the cell nucleus, right? They really give us a confidence that indeed you can use high C data to make further uh, inference uh, for the 3D genome structures inside the cell nucleus. 